completing a Stuart triple expansion engine part 34, making a new slide valve for the intermediate cylinder. I made a slide valve for the intermediate cylinder in a previous episode, but I wasn't happy with it. And the reason for that was, at the time, I didn't have the correct size cutter. I'm starting this video by showing how not to do the job. For instance, the cutter that I'm using is too small and very blunt. And I'm taking the cuts the wrong way. In this clip, the cutter is still blunt, but now instead of taking longitudinal cuts, I'm taking transverse cuts. By doing this, even with the blunt cutter, there is much less chance of the block moving out of the way. Try it for yourself on a piece of scrap gun metal or brass, clamp it tightly in the machine vise, take a longitudinal cut with a blunt cutter, and then come back the other way, and you will notice that it continues to cut, owing to the fact that the metal block is pushed in one direction and lifts out of the machine vise very slightly. I don't have the facility to sharpen end mills, so once I've finished with this one, I'm going to throw it in the bin. Just in case I accidentally pick it up and use it on another job, it really is badly damaged. The last time I used this cutter was on a very hard piece of metal, and I didn't use any lubrication or coolant. At this stage, I'd like to mention that I'm not entirely stupid, and I damaged this cutter whilst cutting a very hard piece of metal for one of my videos and I didn't want to apply lubricant because the job is far more visible if the part is dry. I often show the wrong way of doing things. When I do things wrong, I remember that more than when I do things right. The finish was initially very rough, but I cleaned it up on my belt sander, and here I'm checking that it's square. This gunmetal block is far too big for the job that I need it to do. And as gunmetal is expensive, I don't just want to mill it off into swarf. Instead, I'm going to cut the block on the felt tip pen line using my bandsaw. A quick health and safety warning, when cutting small parts using a bandsaw, use a piece of wood or similar to push the part against the blade. I didn't really follow the felt tip pen mark, I couldn't see what I was doing for the push stick. But by clamping the block in the machine vise and cleaning up the end using the side of an end mill, seemed to put that right, it's now square. Once I'd milled one side, I turned the block over in the machine vise and machined the other side. The end mill wasn't set long enough to cut it all the way down. But that really didn't matter, I'll get that later. Here I'm milling the top. And once this part of the job is completed, then the block will be square. All I need to do is clean it up on the belt sander, and then using the square block, I can manufacture a slide valve. By using a series of rough cuts, followed by finer cuts, I'm reducing the block to the size I need it to be. Because the block is now square, I can hold it quite securely in the machine vise, and now you can see using a sharp cutter, it's perfectly acceptable to use a longitudinal traverse. Here's a shot of the block, sat next to the old valve that I made. The old valve was very experimental, mainly because at the time, as I mentioned earlier, I didn't have the right size cutter. But now I do, so I can make a proper one this time. As always, I apologise for my terrible marking out, but at least I know where the lines are, that's the main thing. In any case, the lines that you've just seen were in the wrong place, because I still need to make the block a bit smaller. So it's back into the machine vise with the large milling cutter to make it the final size. When using a milling machine or a drilling machine, it's really important to keep the machine vise clean. Now the job is going to get a lot more precise, and I don't want any chippings giving me a false position when I clamp the part in the machine vise. This next bit sounds very technical. I'm adjusting the longitudinal travel limiters, which are just two blocks that can be clamped to the table each side of a central stop point. And in no time at all, using a 1 8 of an inch diameter cutter, I have the cutout for the slide valve. And on the one I've just made, the cutout is the correct size, it was wrong on the previous one. After a bit more absolute rubbish, incompetent marking out, it's time to mill the other side of the slide valve. For this job, I need the table to travel full length. So I undid the two Allen caphead bolts that hold the blocks in place underneath the table. This is the cutter that I didn't previously have. It's 5 32 of an inch in diameter. 
This one is brand new, very sharp, and in no time at all, the first slot has been cut. After cutting the longitudinal slot, I cut the transverse slot in the same way. For both of these slots, I set the depth of the cutter a tiny bit above the vice jaws. To cut the transverse slot, I just used the depth stop so I couldn't go any further and mark the jaws. On the drawing, this slide valve is shown with a gap milled all the way around it, but really, it doesn't need to be there, so you could leave this out. But it's always a good idea to reduce the mass of reciprocating components. The other reason, I think, for doing it is it makes the slide valve look better. And it's a very easy job to do anyway. Once I'd finished the milling operations, I cleaned up the part using a needle file, just to remove any sharp edges because often, as the cutter breaks through during the milling operation, it leaves a burr that must be removed. While I was in filing mode, I filed the valve fork using a square file. This should stop it from fouling the expansion link. And then I tried a test fit of the valve rod in the valve itself, and everything's OK. This is the original drive block that I made, I'm not going to use it, I'm going to make another one that matches this valve, this one's too short. I'm not going to show it in the video, but I cut and machined a block to be an easy fit in the cross slot in the slide valve. Then I coated one side in marking out blue, fitted it into the slot in the valve, and then partially assembled the valve in my jig on the engine to make a mark on the marking out blue to show me where to drill the hole. And here it is. I drilled the hole tapping size for 4BA, which is 1 8th of an inch, and here I've just threaded the hole using a 4BA tap. Before fitting the slide valve and the other parts back to the engine for the timing operation, I'm giving all of the components a good coating of oil. And here is the slide valve in the position it's going to be. And in the next episode, I will see if it's in the right place. I'm not too hopeful, but you never know. That's it for this episode, stay healthy, thanks for watching, and I hope you found it useful. Please take the time to visit my Mainsteam Models website, and click on the section of the website that says Video Playlists, and by doing that you can find other videos that you may like to watch, and by using the playlists you can actually watch the videos back to back.